Hey everyone, this week saw the loss of music legend Aretha Franklin after her final major hit turned out to be Morphine. Aretha passed away on the 16th of August, which is the same date that Elvis died, and the same date that Pete Best was kicked out of the Beatles, thus losing out on a lot of money, but at the same time avoiding having to ever spend time with Yoko Ono. Swings and roundabouts, I suppose, Pete. Anyway, great loss to the world of music, and so I decided to listen to some Aretha as I drew the cartoon this week, as did my neighbours next door, partly because they too like her music, but mostly because I happen to have an insanely loud stereo system and it would be a great shame not to use it once in a while. Lord help the folks down the road when Jimmy Page finally passes away. Anyway, one person who came out to pay his respects and regards was President Trump, who commented on the business dealings he'd had with her back in the day when he was involved in the entertainment industry, running casinos and the like. I half expected him to follow it up by trying to reach across the racial divide by saying that some of his favourite vinyl records were black. But by that point, people were starting to talk about Paul Manafort's trial, so the discussion was quickly shifted to that of the much-talked-about military parade in Washington, D.C. that may or may not ever happen. The idea for the parade was apparently inspired by a French one through Paris that the president saw a few years ago. I'm going to be honest, when I think about military forces marching through the streets of Paris, it's not necessarily French troops that spring to mind. But Mr Trump insists that the footage was in colour, so let's give him the benefit of the doubt. The current estimated bill for the said parade is $90 million, which is a lot of money, but it has been nearly 30 years since the last military parade in DC. Anyway, it's now been postponed for a year anyway, um, officially due to reasons of cost. Unofficially, of course, though, 2019 would be a far better year for it anyway. The 18-month-long US election cycle will be starting to kick into gear around then, and the president, unable to rely on a despised opponent this time around, might just need a jingoistic crowd-pleaser to get the country behind him this time around, especially if he can then hand the invoice over to Congress to deal with. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.